Good evening. Good to see everybody here this evening. And in case you're wondering, we have yet to find the squirrel that invaded a couple of weeks ago. It's still up there somewhere, I guess. I don't know. We may smell it someday because I haven't heard it this week. You know, evolution is being shoved down our throat. Homosexuality is being shoved down our throat. We look all around us, sin is rampant. TV programming, the media, everything that we have around us, we see how sin seems to be conquering the world, does it not? So, <clears throat> is there anything we can do? Or is there nothing we can do? Are we already defeated? Or can we have victory? I want to start in Numbers chapter 13, verses 27 through 31. Numbers chapter 13, 26 through 31. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron, to all the congregation of the children of Israel. These are the spies that went into the land of Canaan. Under the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us. And truly or surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Those would be the giants. Verse 29, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea, by the coast of Jordan. What just took place? They were already defeated. They didn't think there was anything they could do. There's nothing they could do. The next verse though says, Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. Caleb said we're not already defeated. We can do it. But ten of the twelve spies... The men that went up with him, verse 31 said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. We're already defeated. Are we already defeated? Well, let's take a look. Well, we're not already defeated because the gospel of Christ is still the power of God unto salvation. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. He says, therefore, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation unto all that believeth, to the Jew first and to the Greek. So right there, we still have the power. And that is the gospel. We are not already defeated because we will not be ashamed to live and teach the Christian life. Or we should not be. I ought to say we will not be. Is what we should be saying. In Psalm 119, look at verse 46. Psalm 119, verse 46. The psalmist declares, I will speak of thy testimony also before kings and will not be ashamed. I'm not going to be ashamed of telling the gospel to others. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, we looked at these verses this morning. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You know, we're not defeated because we are still the salt of the earth and we are still the light of the world. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. But we're not that way, are we? We're going to be victorious. We're going to be the salt of the earth. Verse 14, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We're still that. So we haven't been defeated. We're going to be victorious because of that. And then look in chapter 10 of Matthew, verses 32 and 33. We are not defeated because we are still going to confess Christ before men. Verse 32, Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I also confess before my Father which is in heaven. 
Now, if we refuse to confess him, the next verse pertains to us. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. But we're not already defeated because we're not going to deny Christ. We are going to confess Christ. And now look at Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. <clears throat> says, there, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. See, it was the same way then as it is now. Of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. But we're not going to be that way. We're not going to be that way. And in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. That verse reads, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we're not defeated because God had not given us the spirit of fear. But we have power. We have love. We have a sound mind. So we're not defeated. We're not already defeated because we have the power in the Word of God. That's where the power is. Matthew, excuse me, Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. It is still the power. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And we still have the power of God with us. Also, I want to look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the Word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We still have the power. You know, I say that and I think of He-Man. I don't know why that comes into my mind. But we have the power, don't we? And the power is in the Word of God. 1 John chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. 1 John 4, 4 through 6. He says, There ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Right there shows us we're not already defeated. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. But the one who is with us is greater than the one who is in the world. So we are not defeated. Victory is assured. We are not defeated because the word of God will triumph over error. God's word will always be victorious. Whenever we look in Matthew chapter 22, look at verse 29. Matthew 22, 29. That verse reads, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. You know, there the Sadducees gave Jesus this long story about a woman that married seven brothers and Died, who was she going to be in the resurrection? Well, they didn't believe in the resurrection anyway. God's Word overcame that false doctrine. And God's Word will always triumph. In Luke chapter 12, look at verses 4 and 5. Luke 12, 4 and 5. Jesus said, There I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. After that, have no more they can do. We don't have the spirit of fear. But what does he say? Verse 5. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed you, or after he killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. If we fear God, we're not defeated. Because God is more powerful than the one that is in the world, as we saw a while ago. Now I want to look at Romans, uh, yeah, Romans chapter 2, verses 7 through 11. Romans chapter 2, verses 7 through 11. Those verses read, To them 
who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. That is still a promise. That is true. We're not defeated. But, verse 8, to them which are, are that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, this is what they receive, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish. Upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also to the Gentile. So we can be defeated if we are not obedient to God. But if we're obedient to God, we cannot be defeated. We are not already defeated. We are not already defeated because God is still in control. You know, sometimes it seems like maybe He's not, but He is. He's still in control. Go to Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. Those verses read, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. And He changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. God is still in control. He's in control of the seasons. He's in control of the earth. He's in control of the nations. He's still in control. And in chapter 4, verse 17, there in Daniel. Chapter 4, verse 17. It says, This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, <clears throat> and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest of men. God is still in control. So we are not already defeated. And because God is still in control, the righteous will still receive eternal life. We will still do that if we live a righteous life. John chapter 10, verses 27 to 29. <clears throat> John chapter 10, verses 27 through 29. Those verses read, My sheep hear My voice, and I know them, and they follow Me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of My hand. My Father which gave Me them is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of My Father's hand. That doesn't mean we can't jump out of the Father's hand. But no man can pluck us out of it. We are not defeated. Romans chapter 6, look at verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But notice the last part. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're not defeated because we still have eternal life waiting. We can know that. And Titus chapter 1, look at verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> Titus chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. It says, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in the hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. That promise is still there. God hadn't gone back on His promises. Now let's notice 1 John 5, 11 to 13. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 to 13. It says there, and this is the record, that God hath given unto us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. <clears throat> he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. We're not defeated because we know we can have eternal life. There's no reason to fear, no reason to even think we're going to be defeated. And because God is still in control, the unbelieving and the disobedient shall be eternally punished. That hadn't changed either. When we look... <clears throat> At Matthew chapter 22, verse 13. Matthew chapter 22, verse 13. There Jesus is speaking. He said, Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That place is still there. 
It's still waiting for those that are unfaithful. We'll notice also 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. <clears throat> 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. It says there, And you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord from the glory of His power. You know, those two groups right there that He mentions fits everybody that's not faithful. Those that do not know God will be eternally punished. Those that do hear the gospel and don't obey it will be eternally punished. That's all there is to it. That has not changed. And we are not over already defeated because Jesus overcame the world and so can we. Just as He did. When you look in John chapter 16, look at verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus says there, These things have I spoken unto you, that in Me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Jesus overcame the world. First of all, though He mentions there, These things have I spoken unto you, that you might have peace. The word peace there from the Greek word arene, I've given you, I believe, Thayer's number five definition, which would fit this one. Of Christianity, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ and so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot of whatsoever that is. You notice there, that's a tranquil state that we can have knowing that we are obedient to God, knowing that all things work together for good to them that obey God, knowing that we have eternal life. And then he says, In the world ye shall have tribulation. That's the Greek word, flipsis. Don't ever hear that word in the English. <laughs> Don't have too many THL words that begin that way. But it means, again, according to Thayer, a pressing, a pressing together, or pressure. Metaphorically, oppression, affliction, tribulation, distress, or straits. In this world, we're going to have those things. We are going to have those things. We do have those things in our lives. But then Jesus said, be of good cheer. Tharsao. Be of good cheer. To be of good courage. Be of good cheer. We can have courage. We're not already defeated. We can overcome. How did Jesus overcome this world? He overcame this world through His death. When we look in John 12, verses 31 to 33. John 12, 31 to 33. Jesus said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now is the prince of this world be cast out. He's going to be cast out. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And this he said, signifying what death he should die. He overcame this world by his death. Because he overcame temptation. He lived the perfect life. And we can overcome this world as well. We can have great peace if we are in Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 27, first of all. Galatians chapter 3 verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ to put on Christ, if we are in Christ, that's how we get there, we can have that peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Paul writes, Be careful in nothing. Again, the American Standard Version says, In nothing be anxious. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That peace of God, he says, it passes all understanding. Well, what are you talking about? It's that tranquil state that we can have. Knowing that eternal life is coming if we remain faithful. We're not defeated. 
In this world, we will face tribulation though. We know that. You look at John chapter 15, verses 19 and 20. John 15, verses 19 and 20. It says there, If ye were of the world, the world would love its own. Go back and find my place here. But because you're not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So there it is. We are not greater than our Master, and we know that people of the world are going to persecute us. I mean, that's just a known fact that we need to be ready for. But we're not already defeated because we can be victorious. We can overcome. In 1 John chapter 5, look at verses 2 through 5. 1 John chapter 5, verses 2 through 5 says there, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. You know, that's how we show our love for God. John 14, 15. Verse 3 says, For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. They're not hard. They're not something that's going to be overbearing for us. And then he says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We can overcome the world through a faithful life to God. We can do just as Jesus overcame, we can too. In Revelation chapter 2, we want to first of all look at verse 7. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. Jesus there says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. If we overcome now, we will be able to come over into heaven. Verse 11 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. What is the second death? It is eternal punishment. It is eternal punishment. Now I want to look at chapter 3, verse 5 of Revelation. Chapter 3, verse 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. We're not already defeated because our names are in the book of life if we're living a faithful Christian life. And Jesus said, I will confess your name before my Father. We're not defeated. In chapter 21, look at verses 6 and 7. Revelation chapter 21, verses 6 and 7. It says there, He said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh, shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. We're not defeated, are we? You look around us, you may feel like it sometimes, but we're not. We're not defeated. Sin's rampant, trying to be shut down our throats. All the time, people around us don't care about what God's Word has to say. But we're not already defeated. Because the gospel is still the power of God unto salvation. We're not already defeated because God is still in control. The wicked will still receive eternal punishment. The righteous will still receive eternal life. And Jesus overcame the world and so can we. We can do it. Victory is assured. All we need to do is live that Christian life. And don't ever turn our back on it. So this evening, as we look at our lives, you know, do you feel defeated? If you feel defeated, then 
Maybe the lesson helps you out. You're not defeated if you are a child of God. You can live a faithful Christian life. Have heaven as a reward. But if you're not living faithfully to God, then you are defeated. And you're on the losing side. But you can change that through repentance. If you are not a child of God, you are defeated. And you need to get over on the winning side. Through hearing the Word of God, believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ's deity, and then being immersed in water for the remission of your sins. You do that, you will be over on the winning side. Victory will be assured, but again, that's just the beginning. We must be faithful unto death, Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. So this evening, if you are a Christian, live a faithful life. You're not defeated. Don't be downcast. We can be upbeat because we know who is in heaven and He is still in control. But if you need to make your life right with God, now is the time to do that and come forward now. Make your needs known as we stand.